let's create a practical application now for the visual properties usage. So I want to add a little introduction at the beginning of our video. And I've just highlighted everything and I've zoomed in as far as I can. And I'm just going to take all my tracks. Now it's important that you shift click all of those before you start doing that. And I'm going to create a about three and a half second introduction. That should give me a good space here. And if I zoom out a little bit, I can see I had highlighted everything. So I'm just going to click somewhere else and zoom back into my introduction. And this introduction is happening before we actually show myself on the video. And I have created a nice little image here. And I'm just going to put that in front of the video. That did not go well. Let's try that again. I'm just going to put this on a different track because it is too long. I'm just going to show you actually what happened when I did that. So we've talked about having our sound and our video perfectly lined up. And now I took the image and by default, Camtasia gives that a five second span. So I put this right in the beginning here of my video track and you could see my actual video clip jumped ahead. So nothing is in sync anymore. So the quickest thing you do is control Z. You undo this when you have something like this happening. And you can take that clip and put it on a separate track. Now you can see by putting it on track three, nothing bad happened. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it a little bit shorter and I'm going to drag it out to the beginning. And now I can safely move it onto my video track without disturbing anything. And I have a little notepad sitting in the grass. And as you can see, we have some black strips here because the image is not the same proportion as my screen. And of course, Camtasia was nice enough to resize it for me. So we have a couple different ways. We can just zoom it here, or I could actually go into my zoom and pan and scale the media to fit the entire canvas or bring it one to one. Neither one is fitting for me, so I'm just going to do it manually because I want this to be right. So I'm going to give it the full width and it's snapping to my guidelines. And I'm just going to bring this up a little bit. There we go. That looks reasonable to me. So I'm going to just delete that animation because I don't need it. Let's just do this again here. There we go. That I'm happy with. A lot of times I find it easier to just drag from a corner than going through the zoom and pan. And in this case, it's not necessary to do that, but you can if you wanted to, and you can scale it from there as well in the zoom function. And we can go into our visual properties now. And we can see we have it scaled to 26%, 100% opaque. We can also make it a little less opaque. It would make it a little darker because we have a black background underneath. But for now, I want to keep it at the full opacity. And I'd like to have a little text here. So let's go into the callouts and add a little text. And we're going to call it our sample welcome to our sample video. There we go. That looks nice. That makes a nice little welcome. And I'm just going to turn this a little bit because the notebook should be parallel to this. And again, you don't need to go directly through the visual properties to do that. You can just scale it right here. And I'm just going to make sure that my text is the same length. My clip length is the same because we don't want that text to be visible later. I'm just going to undo this for a second. What happens here otherwise is because that track is so much longer, all of a sudden we have a random piece of text sitting over my video and that's not what we want. And because we have the snapping on, it's quite easy to snap it right to the edge here. I'm just going to bring this back and we can just still make this a little bit larger. Let's say we're going to make it about this size. And as you can see, it scaled the box, but it didn't scale the text. So I'm just going to double click the text, which highlights everything as you can see right here. And it was size 36. So I'm going to bring it up to 40. I think we need to go much bigger than that still. That is a good size. And because we have this against grass, let's make the text itself 
a dark green so it fits nicely together. And you can see that it's not quite parallel with the edge here. So I'm just going to go into the visual properties now. And I'm going to start rotating this a little bit more. Just going to make sure there's no background around it. I can rotate it right here. And you can see it's quite difficult to get this to the right number. So this is where the visual properties comes in. The visual tab comes in to bring this to a better number. So I'm just going to keep rotating it until I'm perfectly happy with it. I think one more degree. And here we go. That looks pretty good to me. And I'd like to move it a little bit further down. And you can see my XY positioning is changing as well right now. So that looks pretty good to me already. Now, by default, the the transition that is applied to in the callout is a one second fade in and a one second fade out. Let's just have a look at how this looks. Not bad, but it's not really what I'm looking for. It's a little bit faded in, faded out in an intro is not looking that interesting to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this away and I'll just have to lengthen my track again. And now we just have a plain sample video here. So now we're going to look at bringing those visual properties in. And I'm going to go to the beginning of where I want something to happen with my visual effects. And what I have here, what you see right here is the end product of what I want it to be in the end. So I'm going to start adding an animation about maybe right here and I can start that animation right here where I want to. By the way, if you click that last dot and if you click the first dot, it'll move your playhead right to the beginning and move your playhead right to the end here. So let's apply a visual effect here and we're going to start our start point now is what we're working on and I'm going to take this video text and I'm going to move it out of my screen. Now it's getting a little hard to see so I'm going to bring this to a smaller size probably 25 percent and I'm also going to flip this by about 90 degrees. Let's just see how this looks. That was a little bit quick and uh, we can just try something else here. We could do a rotation this way at about 90 degrees and we can give it a little longer animation. So let's just run this. That looks quite nice and I can still stretch this out a little bit longer. Let's just have a look at this one more time. And this is how you create a simple visual animation. And of course you can flip and flop around many more times. You can scale, you can make things bigger and smaller. And um, doing a visual animation like that is something that adds interest to your video quite quickly. And is really not hard, that hard to apply. Now you noticed as I was applying it, as we were flying this in with the angle, we had to play with the angling a little bit. And especially if you're starting out, I would always recommend if you're experimenting with something, start out on an even number with an angle. So start with a 45 degree angle, 90 degree, 180 degree. Those will be good starting points for you. And then as you look at an animation, you'll often notice it's not perfect and you tweak it a little bit from there. I find it to be a much quicker way than starting at zero and just getting the degrees up a little bit. So go to those even numbers and you're getting off to a really good start.